and thank you for joining me for this problem. I will talk about lead code 200, which is the number of islands. So here we have given a 2D grid of ones that represent land and zero is represent water. And we have to count the number of islands. So we know that our island is a piece of land or surrounded with water. However, this problem has a slightly different definition of island. That island is surrounded by water, but it can be formed only by vertical or horizontal pieces of land and no diagonal connection. So let's consider we have an input of one 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 zero, then second row double one zero one zero, third row one one triple zero, and fifth fourth row all zeros. Or so here if we see the island which can be formed by vertical or horizontal connection of land, we see there are just one island possible. But another a little interesting example is when we have one one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero zero and then four two zero 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 one one three zero followed by one and this is also very interesting so let's think of ways to do it so definitely we have to to go through the grid and we will go first row then second row then third row and then fourth row and while going through the grid, we will go to from left to right. So we have to travel. So when we go through the grid, we check for one. Whenever I found a one, we can replace it with a pound sign. Replace order. And now after replacing it, we check for the neighborhood of the point. So neighborhood means left, one step left, one step right, one step bottom must the top and if we are near the edge of the grid we don't perform those those replacements and if we found one in the neighborhood of this point we also flip those ones to pound say, saying that now this is one operation and this all of them constitute to just one island and then we keep searching and now we will do it only when we found one so now we will again search and we do not found one so the next time we find one is in the third row and we again replace this one with a pound sign. And now when we check the neighborhood which is shown here is in red color, we see that we have one, two, three, four, four zeros and this will not be flipped to pound because island is just this pound. So now we have done it two times. And now third time we will again search and we found one here in the fourth row and we flip it one to a pound sign. And now when we check in the neighborhood of this one, vertical and horizontal, there is no bottom one here. So we have just one here, last and when we flip it to pound. And now we have done this flipping thing three times. And now the island number of island is number of three. If we don't look into the neighborhood, we can make a mistake that each one will correspond to one island, which is like more than what we have here. So I implemented it using Python. As uh, the question describes, we have a grid, which is a list of, 2D list of strings. And the return value is integers, which is number of uh, islands. So first of all, we consider the edge case, where if not a grid, we return zero. So if the grid is empty, for example, we return zero. And if it's not empty, we proceed. So we initialize count to zero, which is the number of islands. And now we travel for i in range length of grid. So, and then for j in range of length of first row, which is the number of columns. So i will travel from two so different rows and j will travel different columns. And for each of the i and j values, we will check if the grid value is equal to a string representation of one. And if it is, we will do the flipping which we talk about and we will implement this self.dfs later it's a separate function because recursive call makes sense here so this function takes the grid and also takes i and j index and now after getting one we increase the count to one and until we have and if we have gone through the entire grid for our i and j values we return the count value so every time we are getting one we are increasing the count by one but we are also flipping the one and the neighborhood one to pound. So let's see how we do it. 
So we first check if the i and j indexes are not positive. So if they are negative or they are greater than the corresponding length of the grid, or the grid value is not equal to zero, not equal to one, we will return. We will not do anything. However, if any of these conditions, all these conditions do not satisfy. So if we i and j are in the range within the grid and the grid i comma j value is one, we flip i comma j to pound and we run the depth first search again with i plus one comma j, which is the right right neighborhood, i minus one comma j, which is left neighborhood value, i comma j plus one, which is the bottom neighborhood value, and i comma j minus one, which is the top neighborhood value. So we have four values and four, we check for all of them. And in this way, we are not making any mistake. We will just count the number of islands which can be formed by vertical or horizontal connections. I encourage you to go through the examples and the code a few times and before it becomes, uh, and until it becomes comfortable and you can pause the video to do so. And I'm posting the description of uh, question link to the question in, in the description of this video uh, please visit the link to to understand the questions and see also other pieces of discussion on this one thank you for watching it and um, please subscribe my channel and give suggestions for any other topic which might be interesting to you thank you